Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how you can cover a notebook using fabric. It doesn't matter what size your notebook is, I'm going to explain to you how to work out the calculations. But I would say this has got a ring binder and the one that I'm going to show you how to cover has got a ring binder. It doesn't matter if your book hasn't, if it's like this, but what you really need to be able to do is open the book like so, so that it helps, it, it's easier for when you come in to tuck the book into the pockets of the fabric. And I'll explain when we get to that point. So this book I've used um, fabric with wadding. So I've used a, a, a Kath Kidson fabric on the outside and a plain white fabric on the inside and I've put some wadding and it's got a pocket on the front and a pocket on the back. And that's what enables us to keep the book in place but obviously it can also be used papers or receipts and things in and you can make these pockets deeper if you want to and again I'll explain that in a minute the one I'm going to use today not using wadding because the fabric is quite thick so this is the book I'm going to cover and I'll explain how to work out the calculations and then I'll show you the fabric that I'm cutting it in so you need a, a, a fabric ruler, really, a tape measure, something that will bend. So you just get your book, line your tape measure up to the edge of the book. Take it all the way round. You're not going to go across the thickness of the book. So just from edge round to edge. And on my book, this, this book measures 12 and six eighths and then you just need to take the tape measure and measure from top to bottom and again on my book this measures eight and two eighths so you just measure your book and write your measurements down and then what you're going to do onto each of your measurements you're going to add one and one quarter or one and two eighths so this book, as I say, measures 12 and 6 eighths. And if I add one and a quarter inches or one and two eighths onto that, that makes this total measurement from front round to back 14. And the length of my book is eight and two eighths. And again, I'm going to add one and a quarter or one and two eighths onto that, which gives me nine and a half. So my fabric for this book needs to be cut at 14 inches by nine and a half. Now, this fabric that I'm using is quite a thick weight fabric. It's a, a curtain weight or upholstery weight fabric. So I've cut one piece for the front and I'm gonna use a different piece inside. I'm going to use this like quilting cotton. So because this is quite thick, I'm not going to use any wadding on this one or batting like I did on the one I've just shown you. I could do because that fabric was quite thick as well, but I've decided not, not to use it on this one. So I've got a piece of fabric cut at 14 by 9.5, which is going to be the outside of the book, uh, book cover. A piece of fabric at 14 by 9.5 for the inside of the book cover. If you were using quilting type cotton and you didn't want to use batting, what you could do is use an iron-on stiffener onto, say, the one side of, of the fabric. It doesn't really matter which one. Um, you know, one that's just sticky on one side and cut a piece at, at the same size. So if I was doing that, I'd, I'd cut it at 14 by nine and a half and just iron it onto the wrong side of, say, the lining fabric, and that would just give it a bit more stability as well. And then for the pockets, I've basically just halved the size of the width. So this started out as a piece of fabric that was 14 by 9.5. I've cut it in half, so it's 7 by 9.5, and, and then I've folded it in half and pressed it, and these are what are going to be the pockets. If you want your pockets deeper, just cut your height the same and extend the width of your fabric here so instead of this being seven which is half of the 14 
make yours about eight to nine and fold that in half and it will just give you a deeper pocket. So I hope that makes sense. So what I'm going to do, just to give it um, a bit of detail, I'm going to, this is the folded edge and this is the folded edge of the, of the, the flaps or the pockets. I'm just going to sew um, a couple of lines of stitching down here just for decoration really. So I'll do that and then I'll show you how to assemble it all. Okay, so I've sewn my two lines of sewing against the folded edge of the fabric. So I'll just hold this up. Hopefully you can see that. Created two lines of stitching. Just, I picked a spot on my presser foot to line up with the edge of the fabric. Did one line of sewing and then added a second. So I'm hoping you can see that. Okay, so we're going to start assembling the fabric now. So, I'm going to take the outer fabric and place it right side down. Now, my fabric, it doesn't really matter, but if you've got like this one, this is the pattern side and that's the plain side, you want to put the right side down. Then you want to get your two pockets or flaps. And this is the folded edge and this is the open edge. So you want to put these on either side, matching up the open edges with your outer fabric. And then you want to get your inner piece and put this right side down. So you're just making a little sandwich of the, the three layers. And then I'm going to pin it all together, all the way around to hold it in place so it doesn't shift while I'm sewing it. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to, you don't have to do this, but this is a reminder for me. I'm going to leave an opening of about three or four inches in the bottom section here. So I'm just gonna use one of these air erasable pens and put a couple of marks and then basically I'm going to start sewing so I'm going to bring the machine in I'm going to start sewing here back tack come all the way along all the way around back to this mark and back tack and just leave an opening here now for the measurements to work that I've given you, you need to use a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I have a quarter inch foot, so I can put this on the machine and I can just let the fabric butt up to here and follow that, don't if you can see that. If you don't have one of those, you could use your ordinary sewing foot. This is mine. And you could, you may have a quarter inch um, mark on the bed of your machine that you can follow. On this machine, um, I've just got one of these little handy fabric rulers and set it to a quarter of an inch. I don't know if you can see that there. And on this foot, if I measure a quarter of an inch from the middle, I know that a quarter of an inch is where the plastic starts. So this foot's got like metal on either side and then it goes to plastic. And where this inner plastic starts here, that's a quarter of an inch from the needle position being in its regular spot on my machine. So that may help you if you don't have a quarter inch foot. I'm just going to use the regular foot for now anyway. So I'll bring the machine back in and I'll start sewing. So I've positioned the fabric under the presser foot. I'm not sure that you're going to be able to see this from this angle. But basically I've lined up the edge of the fabric with the mark I or the, the position that I showed you on, on the foot and starting at the first mark I made on the fabric with the air erasable pen. And I'm just going to sew all the way round and I'll show you when I get to the end.
when I get towards the corners, I leave the needle in the down position. And then I can pivot the fabric around. And if I'm not quite near to the position so it lines up on the foot, I just hand turn the wheel and then I'm ready to go again. Okay, so I've sewn all the way around now. I'm just gonna um, trim off the bits of thread. This has all been sewn. This is my opening here. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to clip the corners just to make them a little bit easier for when I come to turn them. Going as close as I can to the stitching without going through the stitching. I'm sorry it's a bit dark here today. Um, I started this video yesterday, but all our, all our electricity was turned off yesterday for some works that were being done locally. So I've had to come back to this video the next morning and obviously the weather conditions have changed and it's not as bright as it was. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this. You can trim away some of the bulk on an angle as well, near the corners, if you want to. Just helps for when you're turning the corners out to give you a, a slightly neater finish. You don't have to do it. So that's how we're looking now so far. So I'm going to flip it inside out through this gap. Now, it's easier if you can try and put your hands in and try and get to a corner and flip a corner out first and then just try and ease it all through that gap. Take your time because you don't want to rip any of your stitches. But it will, it will all come through that gap. If you've left about three or four inches, I've only left maybe about three inches, but it, it will come through. Just gently ease it through. Once I've got it all through, I'll come back and I'll show you where we're at. So I've got it all turned out. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use something just to get in and poke out those corners. You want to be not too rough and you want to try and get the corners as, as best you can. You don't want a lot of bulk folding around in there because we're going to top stitch this and then it just makes it difficult for when you come to top stitch it. And if you can, as I say, cut away some of that, that bulk in the corner, this helps this process here. So this is how we're looking so far. This is the open edge. Got some stray threads there I'll cut off. And just manipulate your seams. So make sure that your, your fabric is all lined up nicely. We're gonna go and, I'm gonna go and press this in a minute, but just you know manipulate these seams because it all adds to the how it will look when it's finished. Just need to turn my pockets the right way around. Okay, so this all feels as though it's all lined up nicely now. This is the opening here and you just need to fold in your fabric and make sure it all lines up because we're going to sew around here now with about an eighth of an inch to hold all this in place. But I'm just going to go and give it a press before I do that. So the neater you can get this at this stage, the neater the finished item will be. And when I flip it over, you can't see any of the lining showing through around the edges. And that's what I mean by when I say just manipulate your seams. So this is, this is the open edge here. 
So basically I'm just going to do exactly the same as I did before now. I'm going to start at a point, back tack, so all the way round and come back and, and that will give us a nice top stitching on the um, fabric itself but it will seal this edge up and you need to do this with about an eighth of an inch. If you do a quarter you run the risk of not catching this seam in. So because you've sewn with a quarter inch all the way around, you need to do this one now with about an eighth. So just as, as neat as you can do it using your presser foot, line up, you know, pick a, pick a spot on your fabric with your, with, your, with your foot and sew all the way around. Okay, so I've just moved the camera angle a little bit. don't know how well you're going to see this, but as I say, basically I've lined up the edge of my fabric with a spot on my presser foot and I'm just going to sew at that distance hopefully all the way round. I get to the corner I'm going to leave the needle in the down position lift up the presser foot and just pivot the fabric round and hopefully line up with that same position again for when I come down this next side you have to take this slow um, because you've got bulk in the corners and you may just need to push this bit through when you get when you're starting off again slow down a little bit keep the needle in the down position as I say just ease this through watch your fingers Now I've kept my thread white on this, but you know, you could do anything. Um, just move the machine out of it. Okay, so this is how we're looking now. It's sewn all the way around and I've sealed up that edge. And I don't know if you can see this, but the stitching is very close to the edge all the way around. So we'll get the book and see if it fits. There you go, so that fits lovely, perfectly. Obviously you could do this in patterned fabrics, um, you could have the same on the outside as on the inside. You could even maybe, if you've got scraps of fabric, sew all your scraps of fabric together, maybe in strips, kind of like, you know, quilt style in, in, um, in lengths. And then once you've got all your fabric sewn together, cut that piece of fabric then to the size that you need for your book. I'm thinking that I might just decorate this with a little scan and cut rhinestone pattern. So I might just go and do that and then come back and show you. Here it is all finished. I've added the scan and cut rhinestone um, design that I cut a while ago that I just found in my rhinestone box when I was thinking about maybe decorating the front. So a nice simple design. You've got little pockets, as I say, that you can use for receipts, but they actually these pockets are what hold the book in place. So it's got a nice pattern inside and a plain outside. And then I'll just show you the other one again. This is the one that I did with wadding. So I think 
they turned out well and as I say if you use the measurements and stick to the quarter inch seam allowance that I've shown you hopefully it will work out for you so I hope you found the video helpful please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you don't already do so. Please give the video a big thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.